Hi everyone, I'm Mitch Hanley from Inventory Hive and I'm delighted to say that we're joined by the founder Richard Abbotts as we're delighted to confirm that we are now doing 360 degree virtual tours on the Inventory Hive platform. This now means you can create 360 virtual tours and property inspection reports all under one roof. So today we're going to show you how to get started with creating your 360 virtual tours on Inventory Hive. And Richard Abbotts will lead the way today and I'll try and give him some questions along the way that you might think of that um, might help answer some of your questions. So yeah, go for it, Richard. Superb, thanks very much, Mitch. So we really wanna to make today's webinar as short and snappy as possible. Uh, and in order to achieve that, we came up with some handouts that we could give out on the, on the, uh, during the webinar uh, that mean that we're not sort of wasting time you know, teaching people to suck eggs and, and you know, showing them things that they can digest at, at their own time. So uh, on the right hand side of your control panels on the webinar, you will see that there is a handout section. I've, I've done a screenshot of that here and just uh, so put a little box around it. So if you hit on that uh, and open up that file, there's a, there's a PDF file on there. That PDF file uh, looks a little something like this. Um, and on there, there's a link. If you hit on the link, it then takes you onto a landing page where you can pop your name and your email address and then hit get your guide. When you hit get your guide, you'll then get an email. Um, it'll take a minute or so and the email will just have a link uh, to some files. If for some reason that email doesn't land within your in your inbox within a minute or so, uh, just check your junk spam folder, just see if it's landed in there. And then when you hit on that option, it will then download the files for you. And within that, you will then have access to this folder which looks a little something like this so in there you'll have uh, a few things so you'll have some practice uh, 360 photos uh, which means if you don't have a 360 camera you want to have a play around with these features you can do those files are in there and i'm going to be using those during the, the demo part of things uh, in a moment and then you've also got a great sort of word guide in there about gdpr and consumer protection regulation um, say if you're a letting agent or an inventory company you can pop your own logo on there and customize that uh, we've also got a price list uh, for the uk in general if you're uh, paying for a virtual tour as a service, someone coming in doing it for you. And then we've also got inventory highs price list in there as well. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to jump straight into the actual demonstration part uh, of today's session, because I think that's where everyone's going to get you know, the most value. So if I go into here, uh, onto uh, the Inventory Hive uh, dashboard. Uh, so uh, this is uh, brand new. Um, we have been working with 360 cameras for some time at Inventory Hive, about 18 months now. We've been directly integrated with a couple of manufacturers, uh, which I'll come on to uh, after we've done the demo part of things, uh, which, which basically means that our app will talk directly to these cameras, which means you tag them in the relevant room as you go. And that's a huge time saver compared to a lot of virtual tours platforms that are out there because often you have to go through a gallery, work out which photo related to which room, and it can be very manual and it can be, and you know, often be an inefficient way of doing things. Uh, but if I go straight into the 360 tours area, up on the top of the dashboard, it will then take me in. And I've got a few sort of tours that I made earlier, as it were. Uh, so you can see those on here. But what we're going to do is we're literally going to do one from scratch. I'm going to show you just how straightforward it is to do this. Uh, so if I hit my add button, it then comes up uh, with uh, a setup screen. Now, on all of the screens and the modals within uh, the, the tour, Inventory Hive's tour creation, there's a little demo button on each screen so you can always hit dem uh, play on that and they're literally sort of two minute snippets and they just talk you through that particular screen because sometimes when something's new it can be quite daunting uh, and obviously those those videos are designed to to take away um you know any sort of concerns that it's going to be complicated so and i'll give you an example of that so when you set up um, a tour inside inventory hive you've got a few options but when you f first go into this screen these, uh, it's really quick and easy to set one up. So I can give my tour um, a name. So I'm just gonna call it example tour. Uh, let's have a look, example tour demo, I'll call it. So, and then that is the only mandatory field when I'm setting up a tour. So in other words, I, there's, I've got a few other fields in here that are optional that I could give it a public tour name. So that's the name that someone sees when they're viewing it on their phone, whether they're, you know, potential buyer of a property or a potential tenant or a resident. Uh, that's the name that they, you give it. But you don't have to give it a name. Uh, there are some little tool tips on there as well that you can click on and they'll tell you about 
you know what those fields represent for example so, you, you could put the like the property address name if you want to if, if that's the public yes. store name you want to give so yeah that's a good shout Mitch yeah absolutely and the other bit though is um, in terms of how you customize the branding on these reports you can get quite clever so a good example of this is you know on inventory hive you can set up branches so if i was an inventory company and i was working for red lettings yellow lettings blue lettings i can set up different branches and that will determine the branding that goes on my tour so if it was red lettings it would have red lettings logo in the corner of the tour for me so it's really simple to set that up once you've got your sort of branches set up and that's the kind of thing that the inventory hive team support people with but i don't want to lay too much time on this particular screen you can also, uh, the final thing I will comment on is you can add an exterior photo, uh, which essentially is the image that you see on the front cover uh, of your tour. If I just move this down a bit. So, but I don't have to add that in at all. That again, that's completely optional um, because what it will do is if I don't add that photo, it will use the first 360 image starting point as, as the cover image on my dashboard area. So again, it's all designed to be really simple and quick to set up. Um, but I've just gone with example tour demo. I'm going to hit save on that. And then literally it takes me into to the area where I create my tour. So from here, um, the first step, and again, uh, just to come back to this, there is a play demo button in here as well that talks you through this particular screen. So it's very sort of step by step. Uh, but as is the case, if I was doing a, a 360 virtual tour, um, it's a case of adding some areas on. Now, uh, we call it areas because you could do a tour. It doesn't have to be of a house. It could be of a restaurant, of a golf course. Naturally, Inventory Hive is, is positioned within the property market and therefore we do give you some shortcuts specific to property in here. So for example, if I just come back out of here, I'm going to add multiple areas for my tour. Uh, so as an example, in here, I could say, uh, let's have a look, I don't know, front garden. And then I could say kitchen. And then I could say living room. This is very similar to, I see that like the design of this is very similar to the um, the reporting side of things and then reach a hive to try and keep it as consistent as possible. Yeah, thanks for that, Mitch. And in a moment as well, we will show you that you can actually take take a property from the properties section in Inventory Hive and then transfer it into your tours area as well. So we've designed this so that you can do a tour from scratch on a property or a space that you've never been to before. Or if it's a property that maybe you've done a report for in the past, you can transfer the information over and then create a tour. So it will build the bones of the rooms out for you but with a click of a few buttons. And I will show that in a moment. But what I've done here is I've added a front garden, a kitchen and a living room. Now, I've added those spaces specifically purely because the, the files that I mentioned a moment ago that you can download, there are uh, some images in there that relate to these spaces, um, which uh, let's have a quick look. Here we go. So in here in the, in the file download, you'll see I've got some 360 photos and some standard photos in there that we, we're going to use. Um, so hopefully this webinar should relate to that. Um, which would hopefully make it quite easy for you to follow. So in the case of front garden, um, I've added that area on. I can click on here and then I can select my 360 photo. So in this case, I know that I've added an outside space um, on here. So I can add that photo in. I'm just gonna go in here. Add that in. A little bit slow to upload with me doing this webinar. Lot, it's taking up yeah. some of my bandwidth. <laughs> there's a, I've noticed there's another play demo button as well there as well. So um. yes. Okay. So right. So I've added my 360 photo in now. Now. As I say, generally speaking, you would do this via the Inventory Hive app um, at the property. So you, you put this on a tripod and then you get out that out of view, press the take a photo button and it will snap it. Obviously, at the moment, our initial launch is purely based on the web version. So we're going to be releasing the app version in the next few weeks. But this just is going to be the same interface that you would see on a smartphone or a tablet. So what I've done here now is I've added my 360 in. The next thing I can do is set my uh, the, the starting position of my 360 photo. 
So here is a good example. So whoever opens up this tour, whether it be accessing it on a portal or via an email link or a QR code, when they hit on it, this is the starting position that they will see on the virtual tour. So I want it, if I wanted it to face the sky, I would point to the sky and hit set position. But obviously that wouldn't make any sense for this one. I'm going to hit set position on here and there it will add that, uh, that position for me on here. So the next step is to add in the photo for the kitchen. So if I just come in here, When uh, setting your positions, Richard, is there any hints and tips on that? Like, I know, like, is it good to set the position of as you would potentially walk into a specific room, for example, or anything like that? Absolutely, yeah. I think I think that's a good question, Mitch. So, so what I'm doing here with this one is I am actually doing this on the basis that obviously a moment ago I had the image outside, so I want the person viewing the tour to click on this front door or tap it with their finger and then I want it to take them straight into the kitchen as though they've just walked into the property. So that's all I've done there is I've set that position um, and then I'll hit done on there and then in the next space, living room, I'm just going to add another image. And obviously it's probably um, quite a simple question but there's no limit on the number of areas you can add in to a virtual tour. Not at all, no. I think in a lot of properties, you know, your standard residential properties, you're probably going to have one or two images maximum in a room. Um, yeah. But if, say, you've got an L-shaped kitchen, you might want to add two or three areas in. But, uh, you know, when you can add those multiple areas, it's really quick to do that. So there we have it. So straight away, I've added my 360 images in. As I say, when you're using the app and the integration, you would do that bit live at the property. You wouldn't have to do this manually afterwards. But this is purely for just to demonstrate how straightforward it is to add the hotspots on. So from here now, I'm going to say, right, I want to add a hotspot. Now, just to clarify what a hotspot is, when somebody has a virtual tour, the key benefit of a virtual tour is that that individual can pass from one space into another and have a look around, you know, scrolling around with their finger if it's on their phone or with their mouse if they're on a computer. That person wants to be able to do that at their own leisure and kind of walk around. You don't get that with a video virtual tour because it's very much um, you're at the mercy of, of the pace of the person that's showing you around. Now, in this case, I'm going to say, right, I want to add a hotspot uh, to that there. So I basically want the viewer of this tour to be able to walk around and go from one space to the next, in this case, through the front door and into the kitchen. Uh, so I've hit my area link and then it gives me an option to what area I want to link uh, to from outside. Now, in this case, I know that I'm going into the kitchen. Uh, so I'm going to choose kitchen from the drop down. I could give this its own unique name if I wanted to, like I might call this, you know, link to the kitchen by the front door, but I don't bother doing that. I just think it's quicker to leave that out, but you can add that if you want to add that level of detail. And then I'm just going to say, right, I want this hotspot to sit there on the front door. I'll hit done. And it will then add that hotspot on for me. So I've got that link to that next area. Now I can click on that. And it will say, do you want to go through into the kitchen screen, which I will do. And then it takes me into the kitchen screen. Then here, I then say, right, actually, I want to link this to the living space. Can you add um, multiple hotspots per image? Yes, Mitch. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So uh, as an example, if I wanted to add a photo on as well, I could do that also. So here's a good example. So I hit done on that there. So already there, just while we've been talking, I have essentially added and linked those three areas. So the outside space to the kitchen into the living room, which I'll do a preview of in a moment, but I'll just touch on that point that you mentioned, Mitch. Uh, so here's a really good example. Uh, so I've added an area link, which takes me from outside to inside, but also as well, I can add some more info here. So if I want to add a text link, for instance, um, here, I could do so. And I could put that, if I just scroll down here, for example, and then I might say, I'm just going to put it above I'll there and I'm just going to say bit Bobby's random dog. it's a dog it's a dog <laughs> then hit done so I've hit done on that and I can also do the same with a photo as well so it could be a close-up photo or something so I'm going to give an example of that just now so I'm going to jump into into the kitchen area um, and then it could be I wanted a photo of the lamp or whatever um, I'm just going to do something random here and say right I'll add a photo there this this is actually ideal because um you could for example if you're 
um, in a bedroom and it's got a, like a what you could do is if it's got a balcony view you could take a photograph of the view outside the balcony and tag that into that specific area so you, absolutely so yeah person, i mean the person viewing the tour could say right i want what the view is outside the window they could and then they can click on that standard photo then yeah exactly yeah i mean just just while you've been talking there as well which what i've done is i've added a photo here so uh, the photo i've added doesn't it isn't of that particular uh, storage uh, unit it's just a random photo of a fireplace but it's just to kind of you know give uh, an example of, of how it works so once i've added that in I then hit on area now because I've linked a couple of spaces to one another and I've added some hotspots on I also have the option to preview that tour now so when I click on the preview it will then open up and give me an example of the tour to the the preview you can then see what the viewer of the virtual tour is going to get to experience which is great that preview button is really helpful because you can just uh, jump in so even if you've only just started your tour you kind of get a bit of a feel for it particularly if it's the first one you've done Gives you a little bit of confidence so clicking on this will take me into the kitchen uh, before i do that i'm just going to scroll around and have a look because i also added an information point uh, so click on there and then oh, in this case just a bit of text to say uh, it's a dog um, and by the way it's not just any dog that is chester the uh, the wonder dog uh, but that would have been a bit of a mouthful um, so just coming back around here um mitch is there anything else on this screen perhaps yes uh, worth i noticed thinking? On the top left, it says your logo here. So I'm guessing that's the information from when we created the tour, you could select which branch you could assign it to as such. Um, and also yeah. there's a few other buttons on there that I think would be good to know what, what they actually do. So Yeah, sure. So um, when we started the, the webinar, you know, doing a bit of a demo as well, that the logo is obviously set from the branch as well, which is great because you can have multiple branches set up. So that could be red lettings, yellow lettings, et cetera. Um, on here on the right hand side, you've also got a list of markers, which relates to you know the hotspots in, in this particular area. I've got a couple. So I've got the text one, which I can click on and it will allow me to just rotate around those. I've also uh, got a list of uh, areas. So if I wanted to jump from here straight to the living room, or if I had several other rooms, I can just jump or it's almost like teleporting yourself from the kitchen to the bedroom, for example, you can do that from there. I've also got an option for a floor plan just up here as well, um, which I'll add in a moment. Um, and then also I can go to a full screen up here as well. So I can take, you know, take over the entire screen or I can then minimize it if I want to. So in this case, uh, you know, just to kind of see what that's all about. So I can go straight into the living room and then from here I can then see, oh, if I added a close up photo of that, for example, it will take me straight to here. Uh, which obviously that photo doesn't bear resemblance to, to that particular item but it's just for example purposes and then also as well i've also got this one here so i can then go straight into uh, the next room uh, and again uh, it allows me to kind of experience that sort of walk around and i like to set that as though you know that person is facing that room the way they walked into it uh, i can then also click on anything else as well uh, so you can see that it's really dead simple uh, you know to create those things um, on the tour so what i'm going to show you very quickly as i mentioned a moment ago is floor plans so we have the ability to upload a floor plan uh, that you've made earlier uh, so i've just got an example here i'm just going to add that in and then hit done so just have a quick look at that so you can see how that looks with the floor plan in place as well so again the reader of the tour can just hit on that at any point and it will reveal the floor plan uh, so they can have a quick look at that. Uh, so I'll just close that off for the time being, though. So, uh, so in terms of the actual sort of demonstration for you know for, sh for showing you the main highlights, that kind of um, you know concludes that part of it. Apart from the the, the final bit. So this is the bit where let's imagine uh, we've completed this virtual tour. I just, can then just, um, just before that, Rich. So would you say a good tip is to add in your areas first before doing your hotspots? So rather than doing <laughs> Your area then hotspot then another area hotspot for example yeah absolutely you know and this is where you know um we've put together some you know some infographics so if you you know if you were to get in touch with the team we can show you like a nice simple workflow and, and definitely it's like it's no different to doing you know any kind of um inventory uh, for example or you know or in this case a tour the best thing to do is set up your areas first at the beginning 
generally from left to right, which then means you've got the bones of your, your virtual tour, which makes it much easier then to sort of move around uh, the property. So in this case, I'm going to say, right, uh, so as you can see, you know, we went from the front garden into the kitchen, into the living room, and that was a logical order, but you can then sort of reorder that if you want to when you're setting this up. As long as you throw all your rooms in that you know were there, and then you can just sort of re reorder these on the left and the right. Um, but I'm going to go in here now and say, right, um, if I were to go in here to publish it, now, because we're um, on a trial account, it's, um, it's asking me to go to my billing um, and set up a virtual tour slot so you can create up to five uh, unpublished draft reports so you can get a, a play around with it but when you want to then turn it into a tour you'd need to have uh, you know a subscription on the account in order to do that so when you hit unpublish though it then allows you to create a quick link that you can share or add to a portal or create a qr code that you can download uh, which means that if you were to put your virtual tour in a window ad uh, of your agency as an example and then someone can just um, get their phone out while it's in the window and then go into that QR code and bring up the tour and have a look around so it's a really nice uh, sort of simple engaging way of doing that uh, so so, so essentially an unpublished tour is basically a tour in a draft state and a published tour is where it'll generate a link and you can share it with the world basically so. Exactly right. Yeah, exactly right. So, um, and you know, whilst I suppose we're we're on the you know the conversation of, of of pricing, I might as well you know very quickly you know touch on that now. So, as per the handouts uh, that you can download, there is there is a price list in there. So just this just kind of gives you uh, a bit of an idea. So you know the way that we've designed this is that you can use tours as you grow. So if you're paying for your Imagery Hive subscription monthly. Your tours pricing would also be monthly. Uh, so, as an example, you can have everybody gets five stored tours for free, allowing them to have a play around and create some tours. When they're ready to publish them, uh, that's when they would move on to the published tour slot. So, one published tour at any one time, and that you can publish and unpublish at any time as well. So, you can, you know, create a tour and then uh, unpublish it, which gives you that slot free again. Now, that's just one pound eighty a month. Um, for that um, for that slot, and again, you can cancel that any time. Uh, and the same applies, um, you know, if you're paying annually, then you you pay up front for the year. But of course, it works out to two months free uh, when you compare it to the monthly pricing. So, you know, uh, just as an example, say if you were if you wanted to have say up to ten publishable slots, that's fifteen pounds a month. But you can have fifty tours that are stored, and then ten publishable slots at any one time. That's fifteen pounds. That's uh, in that table for you as well there. Um, so what I also want to do as well is jump into the camera compatibility options as well. Uh, so, you know, I think, you know, virtual tours are, you know, very much easily accessible now. So if I were to start with um, the, the Ricoh Theta cameras, so Ricoh, these are the Ricoh Theta models that we integrate with. Uh, so you've got the, the Ricoh Theta SC2, uh, which, is, which is a great device that comes in at £269 10p, including VAT, that's with Inventory Hive's uh, exclusive 10% discount. Uh, so you can you know, get out the gate using virtual tours with a really low startup cost. And as our subscription shows there, you can start with one tour and grow, uh, you know, grow the number of accessible tours, you know, as you go. And then there, as you can see, there are some more expensive models. Um, if you want to reach out to the team, we can give you, you know, some of our info on these cameras as well and answer any questions that you might have. Um, so, but I won't go into that on the webinar now, just in the interest of, of keeping things snappy. We also integrate with Insta360 cameras uh, at the moment. Uh, we integrate officially with this Insta 1X, but we're also announcing soon that we integrate with the Insta 1X2. Um, the main difference between the Ricoh and the Insta cameras, to be honest, is that the Instas have uh, rechargeable batteries that you can take out and then replace with another rechargeable battery, which can be handy if you're busy and you're out and uh, you don't necessarily want to carry a power bank with you. It's not the end of the world to do that if you've got a Ricoh Theta device, but the Ricoh Thetas do have inbuilt batteries. Uh, so, And the reason why uh, we 
choose or integrate specifically with these models is because the Imagery Hive app does talk to these cameras, which means you tag the relevant 360 to the relevant room in space that you're in live at the property. So you don't have to come back and go through your camera roll and files and work out which photo related to which room. And that app is on iOS and it's on Android. We've been working that way with our property inspection side of the platform for about 18 months now. So it's really tried and tested. The initial launch at the moment uh, is purely for the web, um, but um, as we move um, as we move into October, we're going to launch uh, the iOS and Android app and update it so that you can create these tours on our app for the time being. We're just doing it on the web, just because we want uh, everybody to engage with it and get some you know get some live feedback first before we roll that out. We usually find that that's the most speedy and efficient way of us doing an update without having to sort of unpick things. Uh, so um, that really concludes, um, you know, the vast majority of, of the info that we wanted to on the webinar today. Um, I appreciate I've tried to rattle through that as quickly as, as possible, but we will be uh, sending out the opportunity for anybody that's interested to have uh, personal, individual sort of one-to-one -one conversations about this and ask questions and, and go through it. Uh, but as I say, we would strongly recommend downloading those links that I mentioned at the start of the webinar uh, so you can get those files and just have a play. Like like anything, that you know, the best way to learn is, is just by doing and getting stuck in. But um, you know, we've we've also got you know, lots of uh, useful support articles as well. It's something that we really pride ourselves on is our level of support. Uh, so you know, if you've got any questions on that, feel free to to get in touch. Um, and as you can see here, you can email us direct if you want to. So if you've got any burning questions that you want to hit us with, hit you know an email to support at propertyreporting.co.uk. Um, or uh, give us a call during office hours, Monday to Friday, uh, nine to five, and, and someone will be on hand there to have a chat with you. Uh, so, Mitch, is there anything else you'd like to add? No, I think uh, we've covered off the majority today. Like you said, I think, um, although it, it's the browser launch as such with this, but I think the it's really good for, to get people to get practicing, have a go with it. I definitely advise people just to engage with it. It's like Richard said, it's really, um, low cost to get started up because once you've got your camera and you can start off on a low subscription with us then you're way running and you can almost recoup all of that in a, in two or three tours if you look at the pricing index as well so um, yeah. yeah definitely if you, if anyone's got any questions get in touch we'll be more than happy to answer them and then uh, we'll show you the ropes as well so we're here to help we're not here to scare off and leave you to it we're, we're, we're here to help so yeah, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, Mitch. Um, no problem. And thanks you. Thanks for your time. And uh, thanks for everybody that's uh, come along and attended the webinar. Um, hopefully, see you on uh, another one soon. Cheers, guys. Bye.